Hi, everyone. Welcome in. Julie will be on in just a few minutes. Hi, Marcia. Nice to see you. How's everyone's days going so far? You're on mute, Marcia. <laughs> Can you hear me now? I can. I can barely hear you. I'm going to have to turn up my uh, volume. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now I bet I can hear you. Say, say something. How are you doing today? Pretty good. I can hear you loud and clear. Thank you very much. Great. All righty. Well, I'm going to hand it over to Julia if she's ready. All right, everybody, as you're popping on, go ahead and turn those cameras on. Camera on, mute on. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much. Doug, we've already got that issue fixed. Thank you for your help yesterday. Awesome. Awesome. So, guys. Um, Great. Yes, yes. I'll let you know, but he's changed everything in there, so you won't see them like that anymore. So welcome, everybody. Welcome to Thursday Deal Driven Live. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be talking about all about real estate investing and how to use our deal driven software um, to find your next real estate investing deal. And I just want to throw this out there to everyone. <laughs> This is just for deal driven. This is not for any type of programs you might be in, um, like a coaching program or a partnership program. This is literally just for this software because there's lots of different types of people on this call. So I want to make sure nobody gets confused, but super excited to see everybody today. Um, things to talk about. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to use this software to find your next real estate deal, whether that be a wholesale, a fix and flip, a sub two, an owner finance, a sandwich lease option. Um, so if you let me know um, where you're located, I'll actually show you exactly what leads I would be pulling if I were you. Um, use Utilizing this software. So... Um, you can also ask me any questions about real estate investing, too. I'll give you the best advice that I can give you on that. Um, luckily, I've, I've done a little over 1,600 real estate transactions over the last 11, 12 years. So um, I know a thing or two, a couple things about real estate, especially um, as it relates to the investing side. So who wants to go first? Who wants me to kind of look up their area and see what the best leads you should be pulling for your area is? Just raise those Zoom hands. Okay, awesome. All right, <clears throat> Mr. Banga, just unmute yourself, honey. Yes, uh, Julie, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm great. Um Yes, uh, um, uh, how are you doing, Chloe? Oh, he said, how are you doing, Chloe? I can't hear you. I can't hear her. Anyways, um, what I'm trying to, um, I want you to help me with, um, after you have uh, identified, you know, the, the property, you have signed them and you have put them in a list. Now, how do you uh, use the software to send like letters, text, or or email? Okay, so what you would be doing is you would actually the software finds that information, right? So yeah. you're going to need another piece of software to do all of your marketing. Okay. So generally, you've got somewhere that you pull the leads from. And right. then you've got a CRM on the back end that will get it to where you're able to send text messages, emails, the whole nine yards. <laughs> um, if you would like, I could give you a referral to a company that's one of my favorites. Okay. 
let me go to my email real quick and get the link because what they'll do is they'll actually walk you through um like they'll give you a free trial and walk you through how to use it so essentially you would take this list and you would upload it into um to this other software okay let me go get that so you've already pulled your list already right yes okay perfect All right, let me see. All right, I'm going to put a link in the chat. So what you do with this link is this is a company that I like to use called REI Black Book. Um, they're specifically built for real estate investing and literally my favorite program out there for what we call a CRM. So if you click that link, you'll be able to schedule a call with, I believe, um, Andre, um, which I've met in person. He's really, really good at this software. Okay. Would that help? Oh, yeah, that helps. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yes, great question. Great question. Okay. Who else is on here and would like me to show you kind of what leads I'd be pulling if I were you inside of your area? Hey, Mr. Bennett. Me. All right. How are you? How good. are you, Billy? Doing good. How are you? I'm great. You know, I live in the greater Detroit area and I'm just trying to find out what leads you would pull in this area. Okay. You go ahead and open the software. I'm uh I'm at work right now so I can't I'm I'm not able to do that I don't think. No, no, no. I'm going to do it for you. Just watch along, okay? Okay. Okay, I've got to update the software. We did some updates to pre foreclosures last night. My good buddy, uh, he, he, hey, will you tell Taylor not to get on here, please? Um, so we did some updates last night. So you may notice when you come in, you might need to do some updates. So you're in Greater Detroit, right? Right. So what type of investing are you looking to do? I'm actually looking to do wholesaling right now. Um, I'm really not trying to do any flips until I kind of get my feel of the business. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So when you say greater Detroit, what's the county? The county is Wayne. Wayne County. No, I'll put it going. All right. So we're going to go to Wayne County, Michigan. <clears throat> One thing I like to do is it, vacant properties are really good properties for wholesaling. Number okay. one, you can get your buyers in and out of there very easily. Also, never a good idea to have a house sitting vacant in Michigan, right? Really, that's anything. true. That's true. So I like pulling. I'm going to start here with the center point being Wayne County. Then I'm going to say, you know what? I want all the vacant properties there. Okay. Now we're going to do what's called stacking. I'm stacking motivation. Okay. So okay. here, make sure you guys push all. I want them to be vacant and I want the owners to be out of state owners. Okay. And non-owner occupied. So this is somebody that owns a property. They're in Michigan in Wayne County. They don't even live in Michigan and the house is sitting vacant. This is a perfect list um, for wholesaling. <clears throat> I want to go ahead and add some additional features. I'm going to pick up all the duplex, triplexes, and quads there because you have a couple of those there, um, which even though those are multifamily, you're in the single family realm, mm -hmm. you'll be able to wholesale duplex, triplexes, and quads too. Okay. Now, we want to also get into some equity here. So everybody, remember that equity is the difference between what somebody owes on their property and what the property is wow. worth. So if you're wholesaling, your, the, your profits and the investor's profits is going to be inside that equity. So he can't pay full market value for a property and make money. 
Not if he's wholesaling like a fix and flip or a rental house. So I would put at least 40% equity or more. That n n narrows it down to 2,157. I also uh, would probably stay out of less desirable areas, right? right. Atlanta's got this. Detroit's got this. The, it's just, it is what it is. So we don't want those places where somebody's going to be afraid to go pick up rent at night time. Right, right. That's, that's the best way that I like to explain <laughs> it. It's like, I don't want a house that if at nine o'clock at night, I can't go collect rent. Right. So what, what I'm going to say is, is we want every house that's worth at least 75000 but no more than a certain amount. If you'll see, there's tons of properties, and I know this about Detroit, there's tons of um, these lower end properties, really, with a lot of things that went on there, right? Right. So I'm wanting to find his honey hole. So also, I would say, you know what? I want it to be worth more than 75, but I also don't want it to be worth more than 400,000. So it's so he's only looking for properties that are in between those two those two areas, right? So if I'm looking at this, this 418 properties, this is a great great list for you to work. Okay. Here in Wayne County, this is one of the best wholesaling lists. So I want to explain wholesaling too for a little bit, but it, even though you might know what it is, I want to be informative to everybody's on the same page. Right. Here's a quick, like, here's a quick overview of what wholesaling is. Essentially, you're placing a house under contract, typically direct to owner with the owner of record right? Once you have the property under contract, there is a clause in this contract that allows you to pre-market the property and to assign your contract. Then once he has it under contract, he is going to find a back-end buyer. These are generally investors. So literally he is going to assign his purchase agreement to this end buyer and he at closing will be a line item on the settlement statement um, as an assignment fee. So what allows him to do that? Because he has, has the house under contract, he has what's called equitable interest in the property. By having the equitable interest, that's what allows him to sign it to the end buyer. Now, be very, very careful if you're a wholesaler. Do not go out to the marketplace and say, I have a house for sale. It is illegal for you to sell a house if you are not licensed. That's right. It is not illegal for you to sell your equitable interest in a property, though. Right. right? So be sure that when you're marketing yourself, I see a lot of newbies saying, I got a house for sale. I just don't want anybody to get in trouble. Not that there's like some big police force coming after you just. Just always kind of remember that, that you're selling your equitable interest in a property. Right. So that could be done with an assignment. Or if you'll notice in about five states now, that's become illegal. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. I haven't heard that about Michigan yet. I haven't either. Um, so I wouldn't worry about it right now. But there is ways to get around that. It's what's called a double close. So a double close does not involve an assignment. It means you might buy the property at 10 o'clock in the morning and resell it at two o'clock in the afternoon. That's what a double close is. So you have to have the money to buy this initial property, even if you're only holding it for a couple of hours. Now, Julie, you're paying two closing costs when you do that though, right? You are, but generally the back-end buyer is going to be paying the closing costs on that second close. Right. So the way to fund those deals is it's what's called transactional funding. Or like if you're uh, in one of these, you know, programs out there where they're funding your deals for you, they're going to be able to do that for you too. Right. 
So you don't have to worry about it because they've uh, most of these programs have figured out kind of how to different states are a little bit different with their laws. Okay. So, yeah, so that's a great list, Mr. Bennett. I will definitely try that. Uh, I do know that vacant houses, we do have a vacant house problem in, especially in the inner city and a lot of wholesalers. Matter of fact, there are wholesalers in this city that are, they advertise and they buy them in groups and then they sit on them until the property values go up. Yeah. And they're not really wholesalers. Those are investors. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. Like, like funds, like those yeah. uh, hedge funds. And that well, sort of that's kind of like whenever I pulled that list, I put the lowest at 75,000. That's going to, that way you're not wasting your time with those. Right. Right. So right. You're, for you, because I've done, I've wholesaled quite a few properties in Detroit and those 10, $15,000 houses are a dime a dozen. It's right. those ones in the better areas that are 75, 80 to 200 that are the sweet spot. Right. Right. And those usually have equity. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thanks absolutely. a lot. That's a great help. Perfect. Perfect. And by the way, if you would like me to go over your area, all I need you to do is raise that Zoom hand and I'll be able to bring you on live. So next up, Justin. How are we doing, Julie? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. So my uh, location or my market is uh, Meriden, Connecticut. Similar to Mr. Ben, I'm going to be wholesaling in the meantime to build capital. So I just need to know, like, what's my best plan of attack to target my area? Okay. Now, I know you're a partner. Correct. So I'm not going to just let you do that <laughs> because you want to do wholesales and flips. I promise you. Right. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so I'm going to show you kind of what I would do. Let's go here. I'm like, we're not going to leave money on the table, Justin. No, nah, no. Nah, I mean, hey, if you guys can help me get, get the money. I am going to I am gonna help you, man. You get the <laughs> get get some direct to seller. I'll help you all the way. You what got I'm it. Gonna... All right. So what was the in Connecticut? Uh, mirrored in Connecticut. Is it, am I spelling it right? M-E-R-I-D-E-N-C-T. Yep. And I actually <laughs> narrowed uh, my search radius down to 10 miles because the 20 miles was giving me over a thousand, which is, I believe that's my monthly, uh, or that's my, uh, yeah, but let me, let me tell you something else. I'd be pulling mm -hmm. it by County. Say again? County. Pull it by County. How would, how would I do that? Um, what's the County that you're in? New Haven. The reason is, is because you're going to have like in Meriden or in some of these, if you still start pulling by radiuses, what's going to happen is, is your list are going to start overlapping. Okay. So if you say, okay, I want New Haven, Connecticut, and I'm going to pull all the pre foreclosures here. And then what, what's another County? Uh, Hartford. Like you would want to pull all these separate depending on the county. And then you never, ever have to worry about overlapping. Your list will stay a lot cleaner. Oh, counties. So we're going to go New Haven, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to go with all the pre foreclosures. If you'll notice, guys, the pre foreclosures are less than they were. <clears throat> um, we did some scrubbing of our list and pulled back some of the pre foreclosures that were showing up on here. So actually, as of this morning, this is the data is a lot more accurate. So we're going to get all the pre foreclosures that are single family homes, duplex. Um, hold on, hold on one second, Julie. I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I, I was looking at your uh, your found properties and your number was a little bit less than mine. Do you mind just redoing um, what you did from the start with the New Haven County? Yeah, it's going to be less than yours. Have you updated your software? Correct. It, it, it went through the whole um, software update uh, when I signed in. OK, so New Haven, Connecticut. New Haven CT USA. OK, yep. just three foreclosures. Yep. Three foreclosures. Yep. Now you're going to add duplex, triplex, quads, and townhouses. 
duplex, triplex, quads, and townhouses. All right. I don't know. Does Connecticut have row houses? No. Okay. If you were like in Pennsylvania or something, guys, and you have row houses, make sure to pick row houses. <clears throat> okay. So like we said, whether you're wholesaling or you're flipping, you want to have equity, right? Correct. So we're going to look for at least 40% equity or more. That just narrowed your list down to 754. Now, I would narrow this down by valuation as well. We want to get rid of the outliers, like the really expensive houses mm -hmm. um, and the really cheap houses. You may not have really cheap houses there, do you? <laughs> it, it, it's, yeah, cheaper than Florida, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Watch it. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to at least put 75000 here, which may not make a difference. It just really mm -hmm. just depends on where you live. Mm -hmm. What would you say the medium home price is there? 200 k just about, yeah. All right, I'm going to go up to 400 Okay. So if you'll notice, that gives you 431 These are going to be very, very hot leads for you. I know, I know you you pulled four hundred thirty one, but um, based on the, uh, I followed your exact um script, and I'm only getting thirteen properties. Okay. Do you know how to share screen on Zoom? Share. I'm actually doing it on my laptop. Yeah, watch this. You're gonna now take over this call. I need you to share your screen so I can see what you're doing. So hold on just a second. I'm gonna say. Um, hey, Chloe, can you um, make Justin a co-host? Okay. Now, at the bottom, you'll see something that says share screen. It's fine. Mm -hmm. You're on your laptop. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. I got it. You're not on this. You're not. Chloe had to explain it to me. You're on Zoom on your phone and you're on your laptop, right? Correct. Separately. I we're this isn't gonna work. Got it. I, I mean, I yeah. So clear your search completely. Okay. So I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back to home. Search for property. Clear like search. just cl completely clear everything out. Yep. So uh, every uh, awaiting search criteria, zero properties found. Now I'll put your county in there. New Haven, CT, USA. Okay. And it's giving me over 10,000 right now, maximum. New Haven County. I have to write county? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, that's where I went wrong. I think that's where the difference is, is that yep. when you put New Haven, Connecticut, that brought up the city, not the, the county. Correct. All right, so uh, I see where I went wrong. All right, so select search type, free floor closures, additional filters. You said duplex, triplex, quad plus in townhouses. You said 40% uh, equity, and then you said 75,000 to 400K. Okay. One, two, three. All right. So, still 13. It says 13. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what to, I'm, I can't see your screen. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Here, here. here. Make this. I'm going to do it on my phone really quick. Do you have a second or you want to um, jump to somebody else in the meantime? Yeah, jump to somebody else and then let's hop on Zoom after this, okay? Justin James Jacobs, born and raised, New Haven, Connecticut. Uh-oh. Do you hear me? Justin, you got somebody said he's from New Haven. Is he on? I don't know where he went to. All right, let's see here. Judy. Hello. Um, I was going to look to see if you could pull pre foreclosures um, and then also looking to do sub twos. 
Um, I had tried to do something. I don't know what I did, um, but I don't think I did it right. Okay. And this was a, after a couple of weeks ago, Paul. So I can't remember exactly what I did. And I was like, I'm just going to join on again and watch. Yeah, that's fine. No problem. It's what I'm here for. All right. So we're going to start at the very beginning of this search. Okay. Um, what county? Cumberland County. Maine. Okay, pre-foreclosures. Okay. There's 10 or 110. Then single family home, town home, duplex, triplex, quads. Yes. So there's 108. Okay. And then your equity filter of 40%. This is if you're flipping or wholesaling. I would be looking, not flipping or wholesaling, more looking to do sub two. Then you could just leave this blank. Okay. But I'll tell you, I would want at least probably 15% equity. And I'll tell you why. Because you're going to find that um, when you take over these mortgages, they're probably going to need work. So you might have to do a little bit of work in these houses before you find tenant buyers. Okay. Or if I have to pay them to move or something too. Or if like they owe what the property's worth, but they, you're going to have to pay 10 or 15,000 to catch their loan up. Okay. I think somebody has not on mute because I'm hearing an echo. Are you? Um, yes, I am. I don't know if it, does this, that helps actually somebody was, I, 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 I muted somebody. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so here's those one of 105 properties. Also another good list is I'd try, did we look to see if there was, if there was tax delinquents in Maine? Nope. They don't allow that. So there used to be, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. Is that something new that came out? What? It could be that it's a new law with that state. I'll check on that. I, I meant to check on that last time. And then <laughs> what And then, what do you think? Um, tired landlord? Maybe another good list? Yes, like those are going to be your owner finance those because tired landlords, the filters that they own it free and clear. Okay, so tired landlord free and clear. Yeah, so okay. I like tired landlord lists because I like owner finance, and I'll tell you why. Is because they're always already accustomed to cash flow coming in every month. You know what I mean? And yes. so then they just are tired of being a landlord. So I've been able to do really well off that list, getting somebody to let me buy owner finance and then do a wrap on the back end. Okay. Um, how do you feel about it where there's um, unfavorable landlord laws? Um, well, I never rent my houses out. I always do lease to own, which makes them a tenant buyer, which gets around a lot of those laws. That's, that's actually a great point. That's exactly what's going on up here. So I don't, I don't rent. I, I do have rental houses, but I don't like them. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That makes a lot Honestly, of sense. Honestly, most of the rental houses I got are like family members. So they're going to have to pay me regardless. They got to see me on a Sunday. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Because what I'm finding is I'm finding myself a little bit more limited with leads. Um, so trying to figure out where, how can I pull leads so I can get decent lists to call? Have you ever heard of need to sell my house fast leads? No. Um. So let me give you guys a, a referral. So this is a paid lead force, le a paid lead source. Um, but it, it doesn't like replace deal driven. It's just another way to find leads. Okay. It, it's a little bit costly, um, but they are really, really good motivated seller leads. So these are where sellers are literally going online and saying they want an offer for their house. Okay. So you just basically pay that um, lead source? Uh-huh. Okay. You actually bid on the leads. 
Oh. I gave you like this ridiculously long link. Like go click that link and then you'll be able to go find out more about them. But I close it one in about every 10 leads I buy from that source. Okay. Great to know. Thank you. Yes. Um, somebody in the chat said, Hey, Judy, I have a question. Sarah has a question for you, I think. I do. Or I, I actually are for you, I should say. Oh, <laughs> oh okay, God, I didn't even correlate. I'm like, I'm Julie and she's oh. Judy. So I was <laughs> like, Judy, she has a question for you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Julie. I was like, uh oh. <laughs> no, I apologize. Um, I wanted to know because with Judy, just saying that about um, tired landlords. Or so what I was trying to do was to find for notes. So like if they're, you know, on a real estate contract or, or something like that, how do I find that in here? Because I would like to reach out to them for that aspect of it, of buying their note. Okay. Run that by me again. So she had said about tired landlords and kind of the little, you know, ding, ding went off because, um, they have the real estate contract. So if they're looking to sell their note, um, if it's on a real estate contract. So that's what I was trying to find was a list of people that had real estate contracts to reach out to them to see if they're looking to sell in this market. Gotcha. So you're wanting to buy owner finance notes. Yeah. Um, you, you're not really going to find that through this software. This is more motivated sellers. So um but wouldn't they be a seller? They wouldn't be, a, but they own the property free and clear. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to find people like Judy. Okay. Right. You're, you're trying to find somebody that is got a note with somebody. Because if you pull a tired landlord, you're pulling somebody that owns a property free and clear. There's no note. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm here. Okay. Um, but give me a minute. Let me think about that. The best way I would go about doing, well, I know the best way I'd go about doing it is I'd get on all the social media, um, on all the group pages for creative financing. Okay. I'm doing that. Yeah. Cause I, I mean, I'm doing it the other way too, for foreclosures and stuff. It's just that, you know, trying to obviously expand the portfolio and to, you know, have different routes and stuff because, you know, the way the, the market is going and so many different things that are happening in it, you got to be, you know, diverse on it. So that's what I was trying now to do. You can out. make your own notes. Uh huh. Would you like, I mean, that's what she's doing. Oh, okay. So oh. instead of going and buying out somebody's notes, she's creating notes. Oh, wow. Okay. Hmm. By, by buying an owner finance and then writing a note to somebody with a tenant buyer. Or selling it owner finance. The same thing with a sub two deal. Oh, on okay. maybe a on maybe a second. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I'll look into that too. <laughs> Thank awesome. You. Awesome. Yes. Yes. All right, uh, Kevin. What's up, buddy? Long time no see, chickadee. I'm sorry. Hey, I'm doing good. How are you? Good. Um, obviously Birmingham, Alabama and Jefferson County would be helpful. Okay. Jefferson County, Alabama. Yes. All right. So you definitely want to go after the pre-foreclosures. Um, okay. Because you do, you are a partner with me. You obviously, you could do sub twos on a finance, the whole nine yards. Okay. There's no seller you're going to find that I can't help you with a deal. But. Okay. So we'd want to see all your pre-foreclosures. Single family home, town home, duplex, triplex, quads. We want all 450. Not you don't even need them to have equity. Okay. Okay. Um, I'd say I'd want them more than 50,000 in Birmingham. 
no more than 350,000. And y'all watch Birmingham's the sleeper city of the South guys. Okay. So no more than 350. No, that's kind of your medium. I mean, anything above that kind of high end for Birmingham. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, you've got plenty here um, that are in pre foreclosure. Yeah. Um, that list is great. I mean, really, you can do any list you want to. Any list? You, any list is going to work for you because you do creative financing and wholesales and flips. Okay. Um, so really the focus is on getting out there and making an appointment. Okay. Um, oh, Kevin. Um, yes. I wanted to introduce you to Eric Boom. Okay. He's in the chat. For some reason I lost his, Can you see me? I lost the screen. Yeah, we could see you. Um, but Eric okay. put his information. He's in Tuscaloosa in the chat. Okay. What's it, Eric? What hey, Kevin. Name? Last name I'm is sorry, Boone. Boone? Okay. Eric Boone. Yeah, I put all my information in the chat. You should be able to see it. Okay, very good. Thanks, Julie. Yes, yes. Yeah. All right, Adrian. Hey, just uh, unmute yourself. Hi, Julie. Hey, what can I help you with today? Um, that paid lease lead source. Did you did you post that right now, or did I miss I it? I did. I'll put it back in the chat. You know, chats go so fast. <laughs> yeah. Okay, where does that appear? I'm going to get you that right now. Okay. There's a little, a smaller link right there. Oh, okay. Yes, I saw that. Oops, I lost it. Can you read? Yep. Okay. I got it. All right. Thank you very much. Now I'm in Tucson, Arizona. Okay. And uh, love Arizona. Pretty, me too. <laughs> <laughs> right, now it's, right now it's getting above a hundred, though. That's when it starts getting really. Yeah, but really you don't have excited. humidity. Not at all. I was going to say I was in Utah one time, and it was like they're like, "Oh my God, it's so hot outside," and I'm like. Dude, I'm not even breaking a sweat. I'm like, it's hotter at 80 degrees in Georgia than it's hotter here at 100. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> but it that's is. why everybody loves Arizona and everybody's so sweet there. All right, so let's look up Tucson. T what, what's the county there in Tucson? I know you got three. Yeah, but P Pima County. People? Pima. P-I-M-A. -P county. So what type of investing do you do? Well, I that's I'm barely starting on this, so I wanted to go with the pre foreclosures. Okay. All right. So you're gonna uh, so there's two different ways to look at pre foreclosures. Number one, you could look at ones that just came out that do not have an auction date set yet, or okay. you can look at ones that there is an auction date set, but it's at least thirty days away. So right. how you do that is you would press single family home 30 days away to get those. Okay. Or. I've got to start the search again, or if you just, it depends on if you want to collect them all, you know? So you could go pre foreclosures. Okay. There's actually quite a bit there, which is surprising. It is. Um, single family homes, town homes, duplex, triplex, quads. I'm not too big into condos, personally. Me either. Um, I hate the dues. They're a pain in the rear to deal with. Yep. <laughs> um, so if you're flipping and wholesaling, <laughs> you want to have equity. So I'd put 40% in there at least. Okay. Now, 
here's where it's going to be a little bit different. You want things over 75,000, but he, I'm going to bring his medium home price up to 625. Would you not agree? I agree. So like where I live, it may be 300, but where he lives, it's almost double. Oh, you got a lot in that sweet spot. There's 412 in here. Yep. Nice. Yep. So, huh. Town home, town home. Especially these ones, like this one right here, it's a pre-foreclosure and it's a non-owner occupied. So they own a house that they do not live in that's in pre-foreclosure. Okay. That's very good. I'm actually gonna gonna on that same premise kind of show you guys something. Would you like to know who the most motivated pre foreclosures are? Absolutely, because this literally just kind of came to my mind as we were looking at Pima County. So, let's say somebody's in pre foreclosure, but they live in that house. How hard do you think somebody's gonna work want to work to try to stay in their own home? I'd say very hard, right? Yes, yes. You don't want to uproot your friends, your family, not if possible. But if you own a house that you don't live in, you're probably more likely to sell that one, right? Correct. So let's let's just try this out. Pre-foreclosures and non-owner occupied. This is real, like, pay attention, guys. You've got to push this all button. I want everybody that's in pre-foreclosure and non-owner occupied, this all. Okay. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and, and keep building this out. Single family home, town home, duplex, triplex, quad. This is probably people's rental places. Their rental houses that they're not paying mortgages on or vacation homes. So you're not going to get a ton of these on a list, but I mean, this is a solid, good 67 leads right here. Yeah. So 75,000, I guess I didn't finish to six, 650,000. Here you go. There's you some really, really hot pre foreclosures. Yep. What about that one in auction? Uh, how does that work? Well, that means that they, they are scheduled for auction. So okay. I'm going to go ahead and build this list, okay? So from here, once I build this, I'm going to create a new, which is what you would do. Say okay. Pima County. You, make sure you name these guys how, like, you would remember it. Okay. Or with non-OCC, however you remember to name it. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and build this list out. Once this little button turns blue, your list is going to be created. Okay. I like to look at it from list view. Okay. So I want to kind of show you what that means. Let's look at this particular house right here. Okay. So Henry Taylor owns it. Okay. He owns this house on South Aliso Springs Lane. But he lives on East Millet Drive. So this is this house that's in pre-foreclosure isn't his primary residence. Correct. He has an auction set for June 28th. So you'd yeah. want to get on this one immediately. Yep. So this one's um, auctions on June 28th at 1130 a.m. Okay. You could even tell who the trustee attorney is on this one. The notice of default document number. Okay. Um, now on the, excuse me, now, now on the skip trace uh, part where the phones are and all that stuff. How do you get to that? Cause I, I didn't see any. Uh, okay. So you can go to owner detail. Okay. Press. Get owner phone email. All right. It's going to consume a credit. Okay. Um, which is about 30 cents down to about 20 cents, depending on how many you buy. Okay. 
generally, if you refresh the screen, if it has a phone number, it'll bring this one back. All right. So here's some phone numbers for um, Henry. Okay, cool. Here's um, emails. All right. Because it says the tailors. I mean, it. well, that probably, oh, man. Pushed out. I'm going to go back into this list. I'm going to show you another way. Because obviously, if you've got a super condensed list like this, where you're like, you know what, probably every one of these is something that I would want to work. You can yeah. actually select all of them and skip trace all of them at one time. <clears throat> and it's only going to charge you for the skip traces that it finds. Okay. Makes sense. So, Julie, on that particular person that um, you were looking at before. Yeah. Oh, Henry. So, he basically owes like $100,000. And has 262000 in equity? Yes. But what this, so the reason that we know this, you don't, this is not 100%, right? Okay. How we derive at this number is the fact that we know it was purchased in 2004 for 213. Okay. Yeah. And it knows how much interest he paid. So it's doing an, the system does an amortization schedule saying like if they made a payment, a regular payment every month of blank, this is about how much they would owe. Now, okay. a lot of times it's really right. If they went and got a HELOC or they've got like some hard money loan, it would not show up on here. Okay. So what is that second loan balance that's on that's, there? Right? That's okay. the second mortgage that they pulled out on the house. Okay, so if he had a HELOC, it's, it would not show it on there. You would just have to. <laughs> yeah. Have now, I will tell you, I've seen lots of people lose their house that only owe $100,000. And it, this house is worth almost three sixty five. dollars I see it all the time. Wow. And I promise you, those They're banks have good. no problem taking all that money. Yeah. From people. They're supposed to pay back the difference that they got at the auction. But the way they get around that is in between the time that they're in pre foreclosure, they're just charging a buttload of fees, right? Like yeah. attorney's fees and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Attorney's fees, late fees, every type of fee you can think of. So there's no way they can get out from under it. It's really, really hard. Okay. That was helpful. Thank you. Yes. So, so you want to avoid, obviously, going to, to the auction. Well, yeah, it's on your credit report for seven plus years. Uh -huh. And you lose your house. Um, it, it's really hard. Let's say there's a, let's look at the other way. Let's say somebody owes 460. Let's say it sells at auction for 360. And they end up having a loan at three, at 400. They can actually, the deficit, they could come back and put a judgment on you for the difference. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think, you know what? I don't care. I'll just let the bank have it. No, 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 no. It's going to be yeah. on your credit report for seven years. And if there's a deficit, it'll be a judgment on you and you're going to have to pay it. Somehow. Yeah. <laughs> Julie, yeah. how would you approach this person with less than two weeks? Well, once I got in touch with them, number one, the first thing I would do is call the bank with the seller and put it under contract and see if they'll allow me to the seller to hold off the auction 30 days. Okay. That's number one. Very, very mm -hmm. worst case scenario. And this is not great advice for everybody, but you can file for bankruptcy and just don't go through the bankruptcy and that'll hold off a foreclosure too. Okay. So but that costs you, money for them. It, it it does, right? So, but again, I mean, that is like that's very, very that's playing with fire. Okay. But most of the time, when I'm calling sellers with these banks and I give them my purchase agreement and proof of funds, they end up just saying, "Okay, we'll give you another thirty days," because banks don't really want to hold real estate. They are in the money business, not in the real estate business. Okay. I have a 
have so a question too. Happy Thursday. Ju oh, sorry, Judy. <laughs> well, let's see. Adrian, did you have another question? No, I'm good. Thank you very much. Okay. Appreciate awesome. It. Um, somebody said I had another question. Oh, I has, hi, Julie. Oh, hi, hi, happy hi. Thursday. Hi. hi, I have a question regarding that. I'm in Arizona too, Adrian. Um, so, my, oh, how do you address the, um, the, you know, when you make that phone call, there's that do not call list. I don't I mean, care. you, okay. I, I mean, it's not great advice because I'll tell you what I do. If someone says, I'm on the do not call us. Why'd you go? Oh my God. I am so sorry. I'll never call you again. Now I just mm -hmm. kill them with kindness and they leave me alone. That's not super advice though. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, no, it, it, it's, it's, uh, I mean, you can, what is it? Attract more bees with honey than with vinegar. Right? I mean, yeah, I just lay on the accent very thick and just apologize as sweetly as I can. Okay. And, and, and I've called out hundreds of thousands of people. Um, or okay. you can take these phone numbers, rub them through a do not call list. But you really, the problem is not the calls, it's the text messages. What people are doing right now is people mm -hmm. are like, I got sued, let me see, six months ago. And they sued me along with like, 70 other people all at one time. It was a class action suit against anybody who ever texted them. And oh, wow. so it's a multi-million dollar lawsuit. Well, I had to hire an attorney, obviously. The other times in the past, I've just offered them $500 and they just walked away. This time she wouldn't walk away because the lady was attorney herself. So I had to hire an attorney and go through it that way. But actually what's funny that I found about that law is that it's not illegal for me to text her. If I'm trying to buy her house, it's illegal when I solicit services. So like if you text and you're like, um, 25% off sale on my blue jeans, you know, that's a solicitation. The problem is, is that, I'm not going to pay and go all the way to the Supreme Court with somebody on a lawsuit. I'd rather pay it off. Right. Okay. And another another question, Julie, is um, I noticed on one of those properties that, that you were looking at in Tucson showed an auction date of in the past. I think it said April 23rd. So does that mean that it didn't go through or it hasn't dated well, here's the thing. What scares me about it is if it was April, it could have went through. It just the tax records hasn't changed name yet. Oh, okay. Okay. Because I, I, oh. I just happened to notice one um, that showed an auction date of, of April. And I thought, well, that's interesting that it's still showing. Uh-huh. Like this one's July. Right. Oh. I haven't seen one yet on his list that I just pulled. Cool. Well, maybe it was the one prior. But I mean, no, it was at Tucson. Yeah. Oh okay. my God! Now you can always get away from that too. So you can go when you're building these lists. I could take the same list I was building for him. I don't forgot what county that is. Something county. Pima. Pima. Pima, Pima. Pima. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I have short-term memory loss. I think. <laughs> All right. So the way to do that is you would pick your pre foreclosure. Like I was building a super hot list for him, right? So pre foreclosure, non owner ox with all of these. Then here, single family home, town home, duplex, triplex, quads. We went with 40% equity. I went with $75,000 to $650. Then notice of default date. Here, I want the notice of default date to be after a certain date. Okay. So if you want them to be, let's say, after July 1st, let's say, you could pull it that way.
So you could look at it that way too. But I mean, I would, I'd pretty much stay with the original list because a lot of people got their, their auction stopped and things and it's not too many. Okay. Thank yep. you. You're welcome. All right. Last question, Avis. Hey, Julie. Hey. Today. So um, I don't know. I got so many questions. I don't know if we got to do this offline or not. But so, you know, I'm in Florida, Brevard County, B-R-E-A-B-A-R-D. So I just want to know if you can help me with my list. I pulled some, but I got like 10,000. So um, and I'm just trying to make sure that I'm doing it right. And it could be because you said the, that you guys had scrubbed the list. So what does that mean exactly? Because don't you update, the, up, update this list from the county every day or every twice a week? What is it that you guys? We, we do. There was a glitch in the system from the data provider that okay. Doug found yesterday that I could never put my eye on it. But he gave me an example. So we were able to pinpoint it. So is it two? Do you do it every day or every two to every two times? Every, a week? every day. Every day we get updates. Um, okay. Pre-foreclosures are only once a month. So Brevard County. Um, which is a, just a huge place in general, right? Uh, it's a little to me, but yeah. <laughs> That's me. Well, Florida doesn't I, have tons of counties. Like Georgia's got like tons of counties. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. So um, in, in my area, what do you think a good list is to do? Because as you know, I am a, um, I was taught owner finance, but I'm open to foreclosure. I mean, I'm open to flips and I'm open to... Um, what were you saying? Flips and something else you said. I don't know how to wholesale. Me and York talked that, about Well, that. that's okay. We, I mean, I'm going to help you with that as long as you just get them under contract. Okay. So pre-foreclosures, obviously. Yeah, I got that. Click. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, my favorite one for owner finance would be tired single family landlords. Do you think that I should use, the, are these pre-buttons better for me to use or is it better for me to click the buttons beneath or does it well, matter? It doesn't matter. Um, I, I, this just helps us a lot by pushing this button, but I would push this button and I do additional feature finishers. Okay. So I'd pick townhouse, duplex, triplex, quads. They are, they're a single landlord because they, they already, they own it free and clear. I put this valuation filter in there that we don't want it to be worth more than a half a million. Right. Cause our, but, our median home price here is 410 but I want them to be worth at least 75. That's narrowing this list down a little bit. Okay, I'm trying to do that. 75. <laughs> and then if you're turning it around, you may want it to be built after like 1975. Okay. So there's ways to narrow your list down and mo motivation. Like if I'm going to, you're going to turn around and do a lease option, something built after 1975 is better than something built before that, just because of the amount of, you know, so you could do all different types of things. You could even say, you know what? I only want the three bedroom, two baths. Cause you know, those are more desirable. Exactly. So that pulled you down to 1249. Okay. <laughs> because you're going to have so much stuff there in Broward County, you could be a lot pickier than somebody else could be in a smaller place. Okay, so if I so if I did this lease, so my thing is, how do I how do I upload or how do I download this list so my VA can pull? I know you guys have skip trace, but you know I can't afford y'all right now. You look too high, so <laughs> I know you're working on that. So how do I download this list so I can get my VA to call? Because I think when we're talking with Peter, um, someone asked a question similar to that, and he was like, "Yeah, you just gotta." Like basically they had to get our login. I don't want to give my VA my login. No, no, no. You don't have to do any of that. He don't. Um, no, I love Peter. He just don't know. No worries. Okay. So you're going to take this entire list like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're going to select them all. Okay. You're going to go to actions. Okay. You're going to go to export. Oh, okay. Okay. What this, what this does what this does is this is going to get the export. Now, what's going to happen is it's going to email you this in a CSV file. Okay. So then you're going to be able to upload that CSV file to any other it's, system you want. Okay. And then I can have them to pull the list like that. That was one thing I was kind of worried about. And then, so let's just say that I pulled this list, but you said that for the, for the vacant um, landlords or any other list besides pre -for pre foreclosure, it's updated daily. But for the pre foreclosures, it's just twice a month, correct? Once a month. 
once a month. And what day do you guys pull that on? Well, it's not, it's, it's that it updates every day, but only in certain areas do there, is there an actual change? Like in Florida, I think your auctions on are on the second Tuesday of the month. Mm -hmm. So then what I would do is I'd pull it at the seven, seven is 14 day 15. Okay. That's what I was trying to figure out. So like I pull on day 15th of every month, but if I pull this list, you were trying to show me, you were trying to show a trick where we can just rerun the same list or refresh the same list, but it doesn't duplicate it. It would only add. Yes. Do things. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So then like you would exclude the duplicates. Where, where are you clicking? I don't see. Oh, under actions. Um, when I'm building the list. Well, first, let me, okay, I'm going to stay in Brevard County. Yeah. Florida. I'm going to go ahead and say I want all the pre-foreclosures. Non-occupied. Non non -occupied. Now, that's super hot. You would, If I were you, I'd go after all of them. Okay. I'm just well, saying that's super detailed list. Okay. But, I mean, you're going to have both on there. Okay. Um, like if I had limited time and budget, I would rather have a super niche list, right? It's too niche for what you're trying to do. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So we want all the single family home, townhome, duplex, triplex, quads. We want them to have at least some equity maybe. Yeah. Like at least cause Florida, you know how we are. We may not have to pay a bunch of money to get back. So maybe more than 15%. What do you think? Yeah. I mean, yeah. but you can do, you're doing sub two, so you don't even matter to you. Right. That's true. So I would leave my valuation at this, call it 75,000. Yeah. I may even go 50,000 to, you said 450. Um, 410 is our medium home price. Okay. So you're going to build this out, right? Okay. Now, and do the notice of default date. Do I need to do anything with that? You can, you could say, I want the notice of default date to be, see what it does. Because not really understanding how that works. If I put, does that mean that it's going to auction after that date? Or does it mean that it's, they just got the notice after that date? No, if they don't have a notice of default date, then that means they just got it. If they have a notice of default date, then they're, they're nearing close. I would kind of just leave that alone for right now. Okay. All right. Thank you, though, for explaining that. Because I okay. wasn't sure how that works or auction date works. I'm not sure of any of that yet. So. If you really set this up good, okay, to where you know what list you want to pull every month, you go here to call it save searches, okay? So I'm going to name this my Brevard County. Three, four, save mm -hmm. location, radius selection as well, save. Okay. So next month, you can go here. Where'd you click? I'm sorry, I missed that. Next month. Oh, save searches. I see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then you could go to your save searches and it'll just pull it for you. I mean, I find it just as easy to just redo it, but. Every single time. Yeah. I mean, it's not just doesn't take that long. OK, so I'm just trying to figure out a way where it won't duplicate the same. Okay. I won't get this. So when you go problem. here to show results. And when you say to go ahead and. Add to a list. You're going to go find the list, right? Okay. For our county list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And look, I'm just going to put this one. I got you. You're going to say exclude properties already added right here. Gotcha. Okay. That's what I was trying to figure out. And yes. then that way it won't be a duplicate. It, it, I will only know what's new. So when I, okay, that's what I was trying to be sure of. And so for me, do you think I should only just work on pre foreclosures? Do you think I, and tired landlords or what do you think else that I should be? I mean, that's on? a, that's a great oh. list. Tired land tax delinquents because in Florida, they let you pull tax delinquents. Yes. I just don't know how to buy a tax delinquent. So I'm not sure how that works. It don't matter. It's the same thing as a pre foreclosure. They still okay. own the house. They just gotcha. got liens on their property or potential liens. 
And so, um, those, uh, but on in the tax certificates in Florida now, they're not beforehand. We used to just auction them off on the courthouse, step, courthouse steps. Now they're saying that if I bought a tax lien, that I have to put the tax lien up for sale and just get the thirteen or sixteen percent, whatever my county allows at the most, without me getting the house. Well, I think you also have a three-year right of redemption. I don't buy tax liens. Yeah, that's what like I was For wondering. me, if I buy a tax certificate in Georgia, I got to wait three years and let that house sit. And that owner has three years to come redeem that certificate. Yeah, I think ours is three or seven. But so when you were talking about delinquents, you weren't talking Meaning about this. They're on a list before that, like that's before they get there. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. yeah. So this list is a different list than what I'm talking about. No, no, no. It's before they lose their house to a tax sale. Gotcha. All right. So their motivation is, well, if I can't pay my taxes, then I'm probably needing some help. Right. <laughs> that maybe not to sell their house. So that might not be a good list for me and you because of where we live. No, it is a good list. Oh shit! I'm I'm, I'm, I'm saying I don't buy tax I don't buy tax certificates because of the three years in Georgia. Tax delinquent list is somebody that's tax delinquent, but they haven't lost it yet. To the person who has bought the tax certificate, it's not went up for sale with a tax certificate, so it's before gotcha. all that. I was a little slow, but I got it now. You ain't slow, so but, but <laughs> so it's just like a pre foreclosure. It's before. The four clothes. Yes. Okay. So, okay, I'll make that be my list too. So, I'm just going to do that. Because, Lordy, list. I mean, talk to him about it like that. Like, you really going to have your house sell for your taxes? Come on. People sit there and buy those certificates up. Then you're going to have to pay your taxes plus their percentage to get their house back. That's facts. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. All right. So, I just want to try to really like get a good list down so I can make sure that I'm getting my VA to call. And, um, I wanted to be sure. So you're saying that right now I don't need to be concerned with the notice of default date, the auction date. And none of that is my business right now because I'm not good enough. Just not not I'm not good enough. I don't know enough to be like narrowing it down that much. Is you that do know saying? enough, but you got a VA calling. Oh, OK. So and, and you work with me and I don't care if they're losing their house tomorrow. I'm going to stop it. OK, perfect. Though. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the difference in what can you do with and what can you do without I'm telling you, I do all the types of deals. So we're, we can handle anything. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, yeah. for being patient. And let me ask all these questions. <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. Your energy is just amazing. Everybody's smiling. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, Chloe, if you'll put this link in the chat, if anybody that is thinking about becoming one of our partners, um, please let us know. And you can go ahead and click this link. Or go ahead and click the link in the chat. Sorry, I was catching up on my text messages. I should have waited till it was over. But I appreciate everybody's business here at Deal Driven. And I'll see you next week. Same time, same place. Everybody have a great weekend. Bye-bye.